right here. So this is the main application um, that I uh, publicize um, in order to measure, uh, quantify, qualify the concentration of banking. Uh, one of the main features was the consolidation of mergers and acquisitions over the last, let's say, 70, 60 years. Um, but the main uh, data form that uh, we're going to utilize for this project is the consolid consolidated assets of um, all large commercial banks in the United States. Um, and uh, how this information is gathered is mainly through a web scraping process in um, the Federal Reserve. Uh, the Federal Reserve, uh, in a quarterly basis, accumulates data on all the consolidated assets of all large commercial banks, which means all those banks that have accumulated assets above $100 million. So, uh, if you can see, this mainly focuses on the big four banks that being Chase, Bank of America, Citibank, Wells Fargo. Uh, but there is a much uh, wider uh, data and information out there that the Federal Reserve um, uh, essentially gathers from uh, all large commercial banks. And this is where uh, my fourth tab. Uh, actually uh, came in because I wanted to create uh, a four tap in this project in which I was going to give the capacity to the viewer to be able to analyze all the data that I was able to web scrape from the Federal Reserve through an automated data pipeline. So uh, so this this data gets updated on a quarterly basis automatically. Uh, so there's no need to to essentially uh, create a system of, of, of data engineering uh, ELT in order to upload that information. This is already handled by uh, the pipeline that I created. Um, and so the four tap, essentially what I wanted to do with the four tap is a means to analyze uh, all the rich data that does not encompass the big four banks. So this is my idea of the four tab right here so as you can see right now it's filtered only to half display the chased uh information over the last uh 20 years on a quarterly basis right just to clarify juan one second um this yeah. what you're looking at right now most likely will be the app itself that will, people will, will use for this project if they're interested in yeah yeah, so this is my idea of the of the of the of frame in which we're going to use. And you know, if this is it, then great. I mean, if people have other ideas how to organize this, uh, I welcome those ideas. Um, and um, right here, I have the data uh, displaying the information. I have the input box for the user to be able to. Uh, you know, get a specific information about this data that we have filtered. So let me just give you an idea here, like how this works. Because what this does is essentially the filter dynamically changes the data in this um, file right here called banking assets data CSV. So right here, if we open this, we're going to see that all the information that we have is based on JP Morgan Chase. But if we were to change the data and to not, not have any filters here and use, let's say, the last order here. So there we go. We have all the updated information. And we should see that this changes as well. You see, now it has all the information of all the banks. So the reason that I wanted to have a dynamical change on this CSV file is because this is gonna be the basis through which then we vectorize the information, the data to the LLM model so that it can read the information and be able to dynamically interact with the data as the user changes the filters. So uh, don't save. So now let's try to, uh, uh, 
change what we want to get out of this information. Let's say we want to say, um, um, create an insightful plot about the 10 biggest banks based on their consolidated assets. Okay. So sometimes it has an error uh, because it handles a lot for one AI model. So if I kind of encounter that it has about a 90 to 80% success rate. Juan, and just to um, clarify, this is the part that's using the AI? Yeah, this is the part in which we're using the AI right now. Okay, so let me see. Yeah, this is like some of the things that happen when we try to give the model too much uh, things to handle. Yeah, so we have JP Morgan at $3.5 trillion, Bank of America at 2.5, Wells Fargo at 1.7, and we go all the way to, uh, what is this, TD Bank, oh, um, TD Bank. Sure, Capital yeah. One. Um, and right here, it tells you, sure, I will convert the string data into a dictionary, create a pandas data frame, and then use the data frame to create a plotly visualization as requested. I will now use a direct string parsing approach to create the data frame, and then blah, blah, blah. It goes forward with the creation of uh, the data frame right here, and then uses the data frame to visualize uh, what we saw through the variable fig. Um, so this this is like this is like the AI agent, and so um, can I explain to, uh, to our viewers what we're thinking of doing on top of this? Yeah, actually, that's that was going to be my next question, Juan. So this is an example of one AI agent that takes the data yeah. and actually creates the plot. Um, but potentially, um, the the goal of this project is to build multi agents. So maybe you can share more about that. Yeah, and one of the things that I wanted to do in the first place is split the task of the creation of the data frame and the figure into two uh, AI agents. Just because, it, as you as you saw, it was there was a mistake at the beginning, hmm. um, and I think the mistake is because the agent that it has to handle all this right to handle the uh, the prompt and handle like having to code and then having to give me an answer, it might be too much for one specific uh, AI agent to handle all of this. So what I was thinking is delegating the task of the creation of the data frame to a data processor developer AI agent, uh, and then give the task of data visualization to a data visualization developer AI agent. Um, and in the process, in order to be able to assess uh, the, the the creation, um, the the workflow. Uh, we will create, uh, you know, a byproduct of uh, plotly plot and code txt uh, text um, to have to have it there for the other agents to utilize, but also for us to assess how well these two agents are working with each other in order to create one file. Um, and so this, and then from here on, th this is something that I think most of us will agree it's a necessary process to, to, uh, optimize, uh, the workflow, but here, from here on, on, this is more, uh, hypothetical and this is more of a idea, right? Process, because what I'm thinking is that we could, um, in a way create, uh, kind of like a research team that allows us to get strategic insights from the data being analyzed right here. Um, and so what I was thinking is that we could use a business intelligence analyst uh, to carry out um, an analysis of the data frame and the figure to generate 
maybe descriptive and prescriptive statistical analysis. For that, we will have to give it some form of statistical tools um, in order to carry this work. And then um, based on the code, what we could try to do is ask these two agents right here to graph the data frame, uh, graph the names of the banks that are being analyzed, and have a market research analyst uh, carry out, you know, uh, web search uh, research in order to find the 10 news article that have the most relevance to uh, these 10 banks right here um, and be able to summarize to us which each news article tell us about um, the state of each of these banks. And of course, we'll have to give it some form of uh, research web tool, uh, which I already have uh, created um, in order to carry this task. Uh, this is perhaps, you know, pushing it too far, but I was thinking of maybe having a policy research analyst that could also find policy news about, you know, new trends in regulation of banks. Um, and all of this uh, byproducts, all of this news, all of this information could be fed to a data science project manager that could generate an executive summary to essentially summarize the statistical component of our data, the market research, and then the policy research, um, and possibly, you know, have the executive summary formatted in a PDF file that the user could download. Just like you in this app, you can download this information by clicking this button right here so you can see this information yourself you can play with it right i was thinking that we could perhaps add a modulation that allows the user to see the summarization the ticket summary here but also be able to download it uh, and perhaps the downloading process could even have the figure and the data frame um, in it in order for its people to be able to see it 